and I think uh, this gives us a, a good link to talk about Russia. Um, we have uh, the Deputy Minister of Finance uh, with us here. And uh, um, Sergei, the, the question is, uh, while we're talking about Africa as, and, and, and talking about the, the, the interior question of security and uh, uh, stability, when we look at Russia today, uh, we are aware Russia is part of Europe geographically, but it is uh, not part of the political Europe, and that uh, has given uh, rise to uh, economic tensions as well. So continuing on, on, on this motive, uh, politics and economics, uh, where do you see Russia standing today here? What does it mean uh, for the growth perspectives in Russia and for the uh, Eurasian Economic Union that uh, has now emerged over, over uh, the last couple of years. Sergei, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, I share the opinion uh, which was said at the beginning of our session that in principle, the global economy is in a good shape, but it's only in principle. The challenges are accumulating, and this is maybe uh, the effect which still need to be uh, clearly processed and uh, analyzed. The biggest challenges, from my point of view as uh, Deputy Minister of Finance, is that during the last probably six years, we're stating in our final declarations on different levels of G20, either ministers or leaders, that the debt is growing. And it is being said year after year, or each half of the year, and still no sign that we will have quite a contrary position. And uh, of course, uh, uh, interest rates environment are stimulating uh, huge borrowing. But at the same time, we see another big challenge in, in this phase. As far as uh, almost 17 trillions of uh, bonds are being sold below principle uh, uh, with uh, negative interest rates, uh, we see big challenges which are facing uh, uh, insurance companies and pension funds. So I wonder what's going to happen in, in a number of years when th these two institutions, very important ones, are need to service their liabilities without, uh, before pensioners or those who made uh, uh, signed contracts to ensure their activities. In Russia, even in this environment, we, have, we enjoy the privilege to use both fiscal policy and monetary policy as we are still have this space to use this. We have low debt. We uh, still far beyond the general level of interest rates, so the central bank can use uh, 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 the monetary policy to, to slowly go to uh, lower uh, reference rates and uh, to keep the markets in uh, better ready for uh, uh, for, for the nearest uh, future. But what was most important in my country during the last four years, that we prefer to rely as the uh, benchmarks for our internal policy, not the speed of growth or rate of uh, uh, economic growth, but rely mostly on uh, sustainability of growth and inclusiveness. This is the basis which uh, often been referred to the, uh, within G20 documents. But I, for me, rather difficult to say whether any other G20 uh, economy is really relying on, the, on these uh, benchmarks as their internal policy. In our, in our situation, this has happened. We now uh, pass through the period of low growth rate, but instead we have a strong fiscal position and strong monetary positions. We have finally managed to uh, shape banking system and uh, to get rid of poor institutions and uh, uh, stabilize, stabilize situation in banking sector, which allows to 
uh, for credit expansions uh, within the private sector. This is more important. But uh, still, the uh, most uh, important tool for internal policy is fiscal policy or fiscal stimulation. We have uh, now uh, start implementing uh, 12 so-called national projects, uh, which is covering the whole spectrum of internal life, medicine, education, uh, infrastructure, uh, expert promotion, and things like this. Big money are going to be invested uh, from the budget resources and from borrowed sources. But uh, on the basis of these national projects, we're expecting that in four years' time, the average growth of uh, Russia would be beyond the average growth of glo the global economy. So it means that we are still face, uh, uh, looking at the uh, global gr uh, economic growth as benchmark, but not the real uh, policy aims. So it's very important in, in terms of uh, decision-making process. Just a couple of words about uh, China. Uh, there's lots of factors that ch China has uh, become a, a new superpower. From, from Russia's point of view, we enjoy the fact, frankly speaking, we rely on the fact, and it helps a lot in terms of overcoming some difficulties in, to in terms of uh, some different economic and financial restrictions. Now, we can rely on uh, uh, deep internal bond market in China, for example. Uh, Russia's company already there. Uh, the government is still thinking about the possibility to use uh, inland uh, Chinese bond market as a source of uh, uh, funding. Uh, but what is more important, we, we enjoy the privilege to have strong demand for Russia's exports in, uh, in, in China's economy. So I remember when uh, uh, our trade to know between Russia and China was uh, around uh, 10, 10 billion. Now it's 100 billion. It's happened in uh, uh, less than uh, 10 years. And uh, uh, our aim and uh, our Chinese colleagues' aim is that we will have 200 billion uh, of turn, uh, trade turnover in uh, uh, 2024. So it means that China will definitely become the second trade partner after European Union for Russia. And uh, just to conclude, maybe with what you've just said at the beginning, what we, whether we really face the uh, challenges of losing multilateral approach uh, to the glo in, in the global governance. I think last year was a very critical one. Uh, I, I remember how it was difficult to negotiate uh, Judgment Elisa's final declarations in Buenos Aires <coughs> when we have one superpower uh, blocking uh, all kind reference to multilateral cooperation and things like this. Nowadays, especially due to the uh, effective management of the situation by uh, Japanese colleagues uh, as uh, the leaders of or presidency of G20, situation, situation slightly changed. Maybe we can, can be even more optimistic in terms of uh, uh, the fact that multilateralism is not being lost. <coughs> it's still with us, and uh, this is very important uh, because uh, when you, you have the uh, global economy depends on uh, global value added <laughs> chains and this uh, strong tendency that uh, no one single, almost not one single uh, uh, good is being produced in one single country. It's very important to keep these uh, multilateral cooperations in order and uh, multilateral rules in trade uh, in particular in order I as well. So with this I conclude, maybe later on we'll come back to the Eurasian Union as you just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergei.